Welcome to Modi Makes. What's good, everybody? My name is Modi. This is Modi Makes, and today. I'm gonna be designing some murals. So I got the opportunity to work on some murals for a client out here in the PNW. Now this client operates a CrossFit gym and they want a big mural on the side of the building for their gym. They want it to be Pacific Northwest themed and display strength, which I guess makes sense being that it is a gym. And I created one design already, but unfortunately I didn't screen record while I was working on that just because a lot of times when I'm working on these sketches, I'm moving in the canvas all over the place to get the cleanest line work and everything that I can and it just makes it unwatchable for you guys. Now this first design sported a ginormous Paul Bunyan-esque Sasquatch walking out of a gorgeous evergreen tree forest on a sunset lit day. Stepping into a clearing where you can see the Puget Sound with the Olympic Mountains over the top of the horizon line sitting right in front of that gorgeous sunset and a couple enormous great blue herrings flying off into the distance. And the Sasquatch himself is carrying one giant evergreen tree over his shoulder while dragging an even larger one that stretches off into the distance underneath his other arm, displaying that show of strength that they wanted. And he's looking incredibly pleased about it, just shrugging it off like it's nothing. I was really happy with this first design, especially with the color palette that I used and the shading and and just the lighting effects and the atmospheric effects, I felt it all worked together very, very well. However, I was always planning on making two designs to send to them, just in case they didn't like that first one. I don't know how they wouldn't, but who knows? Clients are crazy sometimes. So I decided to start on the second design, and when I was thinking about doing it, I was like, hey, I need to come out with a video this week anyways, and I don't think I'm gonna be able to do anything else because these sketching processes can take a long time to create if you really want them to turn out well. So I decided that this one I will screen capture for you guys and go through my process of sketching murals and ideating and just have a little bit more of a loosey-goosey style video. So for my second sketch for this mural design, I decided that I wanted to go with a grizzly bear because as many of you might know who've watched this channel for a long time, I am absolutely obsessed with grizzly bears. They are my favorite animals. I think they're fantastic and they do well to show off that strength that that client is looking for. I usually go into these sketching processes with a pretty vague idea of what I want to do, potentially just the main character or maybe even just the scenario or the scene that they're set in, and then I just ideate as much as I can until I get to some place that I like. This one is no different, so there's going to be a lot of sections where I'm trying things out, reversing them, going back and forth and everything like that, just to see what I do and don't like and get to that happy place that I need to be at. Anyways, I'm gonna start by pulling some reference photos for grizzly bears. I found this fantastic grizzly bear tattoo. It's basically in the exact walking formation that I want to go with for this piece. And I'm just going to do a rough sketch of the proportions, just tracing them from there that I can then use to stylize it in my funky blue meanie style as I am want to do. Now to show off this display of strength instead of just having a walking grizzly bear, I wanted the grizzly bear to be carrying or dragging something behind it. And I thought what would be most appropriate would be this grizzly bear coming back from a successful fishing trip and dragging this enormous fish from its mouth, showing off the prowess of its skill and its strength being able to fight this demon fish, this ginormous fish, and bring it all the way to its home. Then came the trickier parts as I hadn't really thought through this entire process yet and I needed to come up with a nice scene for this bear to be set in that would be visually compelling and also give me some nice atmospheric effects to play with the color palette. After playing with a few ideas, I settled on this motif that I've used in my artwork before of a floating geometric island in the sky. I thought it would just be a visually compelling element that I could then pull some interesting design elements from 
and get some nice compositional space, basically being able to warp it into whatever size and shape that I wanted it to be. But I needed somewhere for that fish to be coming from, so I decided it should have a floating waterfall coming off of the left side of the canvas there. I guess I have Tears of the Kingdom on mind a lot because I love that game so damn much, and I just needed to do floating islands with waterfalls. They're so majestic looking and so foreign to this world that it just immediately grabs your attention and makes you think about the scene as a whole. Then from there, I had to bring in those Pacific Northwest elements beyond just a fish and grizzly bear, so I decided to put in evergreen trees and some wildflowers as I do a lot of the time. And then after adding some extra little elements to the island to bring it to life even more, I wanted another element to break the border of the canvas on the right side so it wasn't too heavy to the left of everything. And I decided that this grizzly bear needs somewhere to be dragging this fish off to, so I needed a bridge branching off of the island onto the right to lead to the grizzly bear's home off screen. I decided this single solitary island wouldn't really bring much depth into the image, so I wanted to put a secondary floating island in the background over the right side of the bear's shoulder just to bring in that depth. And then I had in mind while I was working on this island that I wanted there to be some nice cloud effects coming in from the sky and behind the grizzly bear to frame everything nicely and make sure that everything wasn't just completely contained within the canvas. I mean, I know I have that evergreen tree going off of the canvas, but I wanted more elements to be breaking the borders. So I decided on making a giant cumulonimbus sort of storm cloud, but not really stormy, coming up right behind the grizzly bear and floating gracefully off the canvas to the top. Now I'm pretty happy with the sketch and all the elements that I have added into this piece, so I felt like it was time to go into the coloring process. The coloring process for me is generally one of trial and error. I just start by picking a background color that I think might work well for the piece. I may change it later once I have more colors down, or I may not. It doesn't really matter. I just need something that I can then put more colors on top of to play around with. And then I start by grabbing certain colors that I think will work well for the elements that I have and trying them out while separating out each major hue into separate layers so that I can play with their hue saturation and brightness later on and get them to be perfect. The first thing that I knew I wanted to do with these colors because I have this gorgeous cloud set in the background is I wanted to put some nice pinks in there like it's a good sunset day but sort of surrealistic and I like starting with something that has a nice maybe three to four different variations of a similar color for shading and highlights that I can then use as a reference for the rest of the colors that I want to set down and as you guys know and you can tell from my necklace and my hat that I'm wearing right now I absolutely love my pinks oh and my light that I have right here too. I knew that I needed some blues for the water and I also wanted to use the blues for the trunks of the trees like I did in the Sasquatch piece because I really liked how that turned out and I like how it plays with the different greens and other elements in the painting. So I start with those blues and then I move into the greens for the grass on the island, the trees, and different foliage elements, making sure to align these colors together while still making them pop. So I have the blue set to a pretty, just more generic bluish color, kind of on the green side of the spectrum. And so I wanted my greens to be set a little more into the blue side of the spectrum so that they would play well together. Then after locking in those greens, those blues, and those pinks, it's time to find the right colors to make the figures in the painting pop, which would be the grizzly bear and the fish. I'm gonna start with the fish and just start off with some yellows here and just see where I like it by changing the hue 
hues and the brightness and the saturation and everything, like I said before, and just playing around with it until I find something that I think works well. This part with the colors in the subject figures is very difficult for me a lot of the time. This one, and even more so than other elements of the painting, I'm going to be playing around with a ton just to get them perfectly right because I don't know, man. I'm like, I'm okay with colors. I'm good with them sometimes, bad with them other times. It just, there's no formula for it really in my mind. I just like to play around with it as much as possible and I end up ideating on it a ton of different times and changing the colors for the bear itself too, from a red to a gold, to some oranges and everything in between. And honestly, I'm not gonna be able to explain this whole part because it's way too many different types of ideations for me to go through. So I'm just gonna let you guys watch it and find out for yourselves if you think that I went with the right color palettes for these elements. The main thing that I'm looking for here is I don't want to use more than 16 colors. The reason I'm choosing 16 colors is because that's the same amount of colors I used for the Sasquatch one and I liked the limited but still variable color palette that I went with and when I'm doing the shading at the end I want to be able to use the other colors that are already in the painting for the shading because when you're creating murals, you gotta think about material costs. And if you have way too many colors, then you have to buy tons and tons of paint, which you have to then charge the client for, and it just makes it harder to give a, a good bid to the client that they actually want to take. So I wanna make sure that I'm using a certain amount of colors, and then I can use all the same colors in different ways for the shading later, so I don't have to buy extra colors for the shading. And once I've gotten all my base colors down to a place where I think they'll work well, it's time to get into that shading. So my process for shading is to first start by adding a new layer on top of each of those initial color layers I have there and then I will switch to a spray paint brush because I'm going to be using spray paint on the mural to create these designs. So I want this to be as accurate to what I'm going to be creating at the end as possible. Then I'm just going to be doing quick selections of each element that is the same color that I can then go to the layer on top of it and add in those quick shading elements. I'm not doing super hyper realistic shading or anything like that. It's mostly just gradients from one side to the other depending on the curvature of the object that I'm going for and the relative distance between other objects, how it would block the light and everything, but in a hyper simplified way. That way that cuts down on painting time during the mural process. Plus I feel like with this graphic style, just having sort of gradiented shading elements works really well. It makes everything still pop while giving it a good sense of depth and not making it far too realistic. Now that I have all of my colors down that I can and all of the shading down, it's time to play with that background color just a little bit to adjust it just perfectly. I had it as sort of a greenish blue color and now I think it would be better to kind of rein in the pinks in the background and not make them stand out too much by making it into a pinkish color as well. That way everything in the background kind of sits back and is harmonious and then the color of the figures pops right out in front of all of that, drawing your eye instantaneously towards the most important parts of the image. Well, there you have it, my peoples. My fish and grizzly bear on a floating island mural design is complete, and I am really happy with both of these designs. I'm not really one to work in a freeform color palette a lot of the time, because usually I'm working with my Posca pens, which have a defined color palette based on the colors that I have available to me, which I appreciate because it makes me just have to figure out how I make it look good with the colors that I have available, and I can't just do whatever I want, which can be a little overwhelming sometimes. But I was very happy with how these color palettes turned out. I think the atmospheric effects are great. I think the colors for the subjects of the painting are fantastic as well, really make them pop. And I like the scenery as well. But let me know what you guys think of the two pieces down in the comments below. Let me know which one of them is your favorite if you have one, because I don't really have one and I would love to know your opinion. And let me know if you have any questions about this video or any other video I've made. I'll be happy to read through them all and respond to them personally as I always do. And you know, if you like the video, go ahead and give me a like. That would be fantastic. And if you like me, you like the channel, and you want to help support me, the number one thing that you can do is to subscribe. I really couldn't thank you enough if you did. It means the world to me. And with all that out of the way, and without further ado, 
there's no final shot, so I'm just gonna be rolling some of the footage over of the final results of these two murals for you guys to check out one last time. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.